as we add content, adding content is good because it means more people are going to find our site because the, the site's ranked higher. So throwing more content is good. Throwing more content in the site is, is a good thing. But you throw more content on the site and the site performs horribly. It's really, really slow. So we looked at you know, kind of those two bits of information together and we see as the time to interact increases, generally the number of pages per visit also decreases. So as things take <coughs> longer to respond, chances are I'm going to look at fewer and fewer pages on the site. So that's not good. I can't just throw a bunch of content which is going to make the site slower because the number of pages per visit is going to decrease. And even worse, time to interact goes up to 12 seconds. The number of visits per person per month also decreases by a huge buff, by a pretty big amount. Um, so this is saying, you know, if it's less than four seconds, most of the sites are averaging about 1.78 uh, sites of uh, visits per person per month. And as we get to 12 seconds, we're averaging about 1.55 visits per person per month. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. So generally, it seems that if I want visitors to come back Come see my site and come back often, I need to make sure my sites aren't really big. Uh, aren't, uh, they, I want to make sure that the pages are fast, performing really well. Otherwise, they're not going to come back. But if I want them to find the site, I need to make sure my site's really big and got lots of content. So, it seems like there's a mismatch here. You know, content drives links in search engine ranks, but it hurts performance and user engagement. So uh, we've got a question here, you know, does it have to be like this? Well, no, because there's companies like us and other companies and other tools that you can use to make sure you throw more content on the site, but do it, I guess, a little bit more intelligently. So you can create a content-rich website. And then improve the performance. Once you know where the bottlenecks are, but in order to know where the bottlenecks are, you're going to have to measure the site and monitor the performance. And when there's a, a, a bottleneck somewhere, you have to be alerted to that problem. Because sometimes you might optimize it today, and everything's great, but something happens. Yeah, stuff happens in the world. Something happens, and uh, the Twitter site goes down, or Twitter API has a problem. And all of a sudden, your site that was uh, had a time to interact time of four seconds, because Twitter or Facebook or some other widget is screwing up your site, there, we're now at a 14 second uh, time to interact, or 20 second time to interact, or worse. So, how can you improve this? So there's three major types of problems that uh, happen with sites with lots of content. There's lots of requests, and if you've got lots of requests, the solution is try to reduce the number of requests. Okay, that sounds really easy, and there's lots of tools out there to make that easy. Can combine these different scripts together, combine the JavaScript files together, combine the CSS files together to make those 10 JavaScript files down to one or two or three. And there are different tools out there for doing this for you. One that I like to use on my Mac is called CodeKit, which will automatically, as I'm writing uh, new JavaScript files or uh, as I'm tweaking that JavaScript file, every time I um, click save, it automatically compiles it all together into one file, which is pretty cool. I can combine multiple images into sprites. So as I have, you know, if I've got a thousand logos on my site, I don't want to have the user download a thousand images. I'll put all thousand of those, it'll be a big sprite. I can put them all in one file, and then, then it's just one download. Do some creative CSS to make sure that each image is shown in the right place. I can employ data URIs. Data URI is basically, rather than downloading that image as a separate image, it downloads it, it's, it's all within the HTML file. Now, covering exactly how to do that, a little bit out of scope, and it'll take longer than a half hour to, uh, to cover. But um, there's some great tools out there, um, including a great book from a guy named Steve Souders that uh, covers how to do all these different techniques. Souders, how do you spell that? Yeah, S-O-U.